Now time to talk cancer awareness. Um, today, the conversation would revolve around the rollout of the human papilloma virus vaccine. Um, that we are going to be having two guests. Um, Dr. Dennis Ejo, who is the founder of the Commodore Cancer Foundation, and also Dr. Basi Okwase, who is the director of Disease Control National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Good morning, Dr. Dennis. Good morning, how are you? Fine, thank hey, you. Dr. Ejo, good to see you all smiling there. <laughs> we need to catch up. Oh, yes, it's very important. Good morning. All right, very good morning. Important. The floor good is morning. yours now. Thank you very much. Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another edition of Kaka Key Cancer Awareness with Dr. Denise Ejo. I am the founder of Komoot Cancer Foundation, and this is in partnership with AIT. Today in the house, I've got Dr. Basi Oposu, and for the for the entire conversation, I think I will refer to him as Dr. Basi so that I don't keep tongue twisting. Dr. Basi, is that okay with you? Good morning. It's very fine by me. Good morning, <laughs> Dennis, and good morning, Nigerians. <laughs> good morning, everyone. And now let's continue our conversation. It's cancer time. It's cancer, cancer. I continue to appreciate our sponsors, the chairman of AIT and the team for ensuring this program is sustained. We appreciate the leadership for this commitment. I have to say this because almost three years on and you have given us this space. So together we fight, together we win. You can always find Komoot Cancer Foundation everywhere. What are we talking about today? We are supporting the National Health Initiative, Human Papillona Virus HPV Vaccine mm -hmm. Rollout in Nigeria. So you notice that me, I don't use all the very big grammar. So what is the human papillona virus? That what is what we hear it to be. So today in the house we have a doctor who will who will talk us through it. But what is it? Is the name of a very common group of viruses, and they do uh, not cause any problems in most people, but sometimes can cause cancer, which is our focus. And you can protect your children from this with the vaccine and that is the focus of our conversation so in the house we have got today the executive director uh, i am aware no let me put it up let me quote something that i'm aware of i'm aware that the executive director of the national primary health care development mr i think mr fowles schweib said that the government will begin the rollout of the hpv vaccine on the 25th of september for girls between the ages of 9 and 15, you know, that's going to be a memory for me because this year, that day is exactly my birthday. So you know what? Trust me, I will be following you guys on your back this morning, this, on the 25th, 2023. And this is very important because it affects our parents, children, girls and boys. So together we fight, together we win. This is Common Cancer Foundation. Who is our guest? Let me give you a brief background of who he is. He's the Director of Disease Control and Immunization, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency in Nigeria. He, has, he was the past program managing, manager uh, of the Ni National Emergency Routine Immunization Coordination Center. Ah, Nigeria can have long, 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 long names. Let me just cut it very quickly. He has no option. Like he always says, he said it's not an option for him to be able to make this a reality. And so we are very grateful to have him. Dr. Bassi enjoys making a difference. Easily accessible. I'm going to tell you the truth. It, it wasn't too hard for me to eventually find him. And he agreed to do this. So I really appreciate you, Dr. Bassi. Thank you for coming on. And thank you for agreeing to do this program. It means a lot to me. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Ajo. Thank you so much for the opportunity. No, it's not an opportunity. It's you that's given me opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> together we fight, together we win. This is Combo Cancer Foundation. We're talking to Dr. Basi. And here we go. As we normally do, you know, we normally ask questions and then we get to know the facts about what is going on because it is important for us to focus on the facts. What is HPV and its importance? And why is it important for Nigeria? What is it? What was... Because it's a big thing. What is the HPV and what is the HPV vaccine? You see, there are two different things. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Ajo. And for the question, just to say before we start, I want to appreciate you talked about our chief executive officer, Dr. Faisal Shwa. 
which they call him the digital energetic ED that gives us all the support to do what we do and not talk of our president, the presidency, the minister of health and all our partners who are giving us the support to be able to be here even this morning to talk about what we are going to talk about. Now, going straight to the question you've asked, what is HPV? Is the human papilloma virus and is the most common sexually transmitted infection in most developed and underdeveloped countries, including Nigeria? You know, there are certain basic facts about this virus that, for instance, is well documented from studies that 85% of persons in their lifetime are exposed to this virus. There are so many strains of it in humans that can cause the disease, but the most common type that causes the disease of human importance is the type 6, the type 11, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, um, 52, and then 58. Those are the types that commonly cause the disease um, that leads to cancer and the rest of them. And in Nigeria, the four most common ones are the 6, 11, 16, and 18. Of course, it is usually spread through vaginal, oral, or anal sex. It does not usually cause any symptoms and usually goes away on its own, like you mentioned earlier. So most people don't even know that they ever had the HPV at all. But sometimes the virus, you know, can cause uh, some of the signs or symptoms that we might talk about, like the small, painful, hard growth or lumps around the genital area, like the vagina, the penis, or endos, and these are called the genital warts, or in other places, depending on the type of the virus that is infecting the person. So depending on that type of virus, the strains that we mentioned um, earlier, it, it will depend where exactly the uh, symptoms will be seen. But most commonly here, yeah, we're talking about today, the cervical uh, in, uh, in manifestation of it. Now, that not everyone who has this disease might see these symptoms. Like I said, they most times will just appear without any symptom at all. And then there may be those words, genital words we're talking about, they may be raised, they may be flat, or they will be shaped like a cauliflower and they can be of different sizes. Some will just remain the way it is without any change. Some after some time change on its own, while a few might continue to increase in size. And then it's when it's getting advanced, it's beginning to have uh, be a problem. You can also see sometimes um, the discharge that will come from the private, for instance, from the female, and these are of the telling us the early signs of cervical cancer in those female. So sometimes we include those increased vaginal discharge in those uh, um, advanced cases. And these discharges may be pale, they may be watery, they may be pink, brown, bloody, or even foul smelling. So once those signs are noticed or those words are noticed, it's always good, always good for the person to go for screening and be properly guided. Now, you had also asked a second question, why is this vaccine important for Nigeria and what are the benefits of this vaccine? It's very, very important for us as a country and going back from certain kind of histories and information that will help us to understand. From statistics, the NDHS um, results shows or 2018 shows us very clearly that about 73,417 persons die every year from cancers in Nigeria. And out of these 73,417, about 12,075, which is about 16.4% of these deaths are from cervical cancer itself. And most times it will be documented in most studies and textbooks that once you hear the cervical cancer, majority of the cases, over 95% of them are being caused by this human papilloma virus infection. So our data is showing us that we lose 12,075 every year. These are the ones that are documented in Nigeria, which is not a good thing to happen to a nation. Imagine us every year losing this number, 12,075, and most of them women, 
We don't know how many children they would have delivered. We don't know the whether it's governors, presidents, senators, ministers that they would have delivered. They will just lose them to what would have been prevented. And this is very sad. The statistics also show that about 80% of these cervical cancer cases present with advanced disease here in our country, Nigeria. About 80% of this also will, will die when clinically diagnosed because it's always been brought at the very late stage to most of the facilities that the people go for the checkup. And again, it's documented from the study that 80% of them never had access to any preventive services, which is very sad. And these are the opportunities that are coming up now. From that same studies uh, and the NDHS documentation, we have seen that 19% of women initiate sexual intercourse by age before uh, by age 15 here in Nigeria, therefore further increasing the risk of the HPV inf infection. And then almost 80% of unvaccinated persons who are sexually active will get at least one type of these nine strains that we mentioned earlier. So most people will go away scot-free without having any sign, but a lot of them will go down with several kinds of cancer. And some of those cancers mentioning them specifically that this virus can cause will be the cancer of the cervix, vagina, and vulva in women. It can cause cancer of the penis in men. It can cause cancer of the anus in both men and women. It can cause the cancer at the back of the throat, which we commonly call in medicine the oropharyngeal uh, cancer. And this can also include the base of the tongue and the tonsils in both men and women. This can happen. I don't understand why a nation, you know, will allow this happen to its people when there are vaccines that can prevent this infection that will lead to these conditions. So almost all the cervical cancers are taught to be caused by the HPV infection. So we cannot afford as a country not to be a part of it. We had intended as a country under the leadership of our administration to introduce since 2015, but we never had the vaccines available globally to be able to introduce until this year when the country is able to get the vaccine, the quantity that will be introduced in the country. So the very specific benefits that we might have from this is that the HPV vaccination works extremely well and can prevent all these form of cancers that we have talked about by preventing the infections that cause them. If the vaccine is given before the girl is sexually active or even the boy, because in most countries, they use the vaccine for both boys and girls. But here in Nigeria, we are starting first with the girls because we don't have enough that we would have loved to commence and the boy child will come in a second phase of the introduction in about three to five years time when we have enough vaccines. Okay, Dr. Bassi, can you can I just ask you some questions here? Because you've gone you've gone far. <laughs> and I need I need we need to hear this thing very clearly. So basically what you're saying to me now is that all these important um, um variables that need people need to know. Um, the impact of why you have to do this vaccine. And I think a lot of people do not realize the importance of it. But one of the things that I've had to look at is that I know that in 2008, the HPV vaccine started in the UK. And it surprises me that we're just getting here in, and, in 2023. To be honest with you, from my perspective, I always say it, I live with this disease. It is very, I, I applaud you that we're even getting here and we have gotten here. I really want to say thank you for that because that means not, not to you alone. I mean, for the entire team, for the country, for the presidency and everybody that, yes, thank you because it saves our lives. And no matter what people may think, it's better to start small than not to start at all. So really, I want to say thank you for that. Um, the benefits you shared, which a lot of people do not look, do not or rather, why is it that the benefits are not, why is it that we see more of the negative? Or that's what people want to put out rather than the benefit. Because I want you to please emphasize the benefit because that a lot of people have more views of why they shouldn't take it. And I always say to people that 90% of people being alive is a great, is a greater benefit than 90% of people having the disease 
dying of the disease, which which is more statistically correct that 90 percent 80 to 90 percent of people with cancer will get will die in low middle income countries not just nigeria so in nigeria where you are given this data that you've just given now is showing that it's very high the benefits please i want you to emphasize those benefits for us because that 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 i think i need people to understand that we're not doing this just because we want to talk about a program on television but rather to educate the populace that why this thing we have to take it if not we're not going to make a difference and we're not going to live our children are not going to get it okay thank you uh, dr ejo for bringing this back again and you know on behalf of the executive director here and the team i took time to share nigerian statistics yeah. with nigerians to know that these are not stories from any other country but Nigeria. We know our National Bureau of Statistics, the quality of work they do. These are their statistics and can be verified. And then you rightly say uh, in UK, they started the vaccination in 2008. The US started in 2006. Mm -hmm. The latest studies show that that was conducted in 2022 shows that in the US, they now have 88% reduction in the number of cases and mortality from the HPV uh, infection. So if this is a country, it's well documented. And we have seen other African countries that have introduced before us who have also shown the evidence of reduction in mortality. And specifically in Nigeria, looking at the documentation, if we introduce HPV in Nigeria, we will be serving about 71,000 and 57 deaths of our women every year. And so this is a situation that should never happen. You also wonder why the vaccine did not come early. We submitted our first application to Gavi in 2015. Since the 2015, we have been on it as a team under the leadership of the ministry and the agency following up with Gavi, following up with all the companies that we can get this vaccine. And you know, there are so many types of vaccine. The country wanted the best for our girl child that has been used in the US, used in the UK, used in other the Asian countries, and that is Gadaxil 4. And that's what we are going out for. We are going out for the best for our girl child. And this year, we are lucky to have these vaccines being released. I want to tell Thank Nigerians, you. these vaccines Sorry. work. They are extremely, very, very safe and effective and they can prevent the infections that will cause the cancers that we talked about. And then it has shown the potential from documentation to prevent more than 50%, 90% of HPV attributable cancers. And it also significantly reduced the number of cases and complications from the HPV infection, as is obvious in other civilized and developing countries that have introduced it. So as a country, if we introduce it, it will be a great benefit to us because the number of women we lose every year, over 71,000 will not die. These are women that and men for some of the cases like oropharyngea that die of the uh, cancer. These are people that would have gone to school. They would have gone to the farm. They would have gone to their offices. They would have been in their businesses contributing to the economy of the nation. But as they die like that, it's the nation that loses so it's an indirect way of contributing to an improvement in the economy of the nation if the people are protected from dying from deaths that would have been prevented and it will be a beneficial thing to the country. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. So now you see, you have emphasized what I really need us to emphasize. Let us now get to it. We need to know how to access this program. So together we fight. Together we're going to win this battle. It's together. It's, they don't, Nigerians, please, I'm saying it is together. All of us need to contribute to making sure this program is successful. So please, can you talk us through the access program, how we can access it, how people can get there, and, um, and make sure we can get the uptake of the vaccines to at close to 100% as possible. That's okay. the target. Yeah. So for us knowing that we will get a little over 8 million doses of the HPV vaccine this year, the Galaxy. 
the introduction uh, is in two phases. The phase one will involve 16 states that it will be launched on the 25th of September. These 16 states are for the Southwest, we have Ogun, Oshun, and Lagos. For the South South, we have Akwaibo and Baesa. For the Southeast, we have Abia and Enugu. In the Northwest, we have Kebi, Kanu, and Jigawa. The Northeast, we have Adamawa, Bauchi, and Taraba. And then in the North Central, we have Benue, FCT, and Nasarawa. These are the phase one states that will start this September 25th. The new set of vaccines that will come in in November, December, will be used for the phase two rollout in the remaining, all the remaining 21 states, early February 2024. So the first plan is to ensure that this vaccine effectively reach all the population in all the states in the country. So looking at the first phase of vaccine arriving, we go to that first phase that all the girl child, nine to 14 years, will be reached with the vaccine um, in September, October. Now, looking at it from the angle of the vaccine that will come and what we intend to do in the phasing, the other aspect of it is, is the gender phasing. In the gender phasing, we are starting with the girl child because most of the cases of the cancer are seen in female. And then this will be followed up with the administration to boys in another three to five years when we have adequate vaccines to introduce in both male and female as is done in US and UK. That will complete the phase thing and everyone that is eligible in Nigeria will reach. Now for the phase one, how are we approaching it to make sure that all our girl child nine to 14 years are given the vaccine. The first week from the 25th, the first five days will be a campaign mood, five days campaign mood to deliver the vaccine to all our girl child. We will be using two approaches to get that done. The outreach approach, where in this outreach, if one of the first target of the outreach are the schools. All the girls in the schools will be visited both public and private. We are collaborating with the Federal Ministry of Health, Women Affairs, both at the state and the national, so that this information goes down to the school very well, so that we'll reach them at school with the consent that have been gotten. And then also conventional and faith-based schools will also be reached during this campaign, so that we are not missing out any of our girl child in any of the area that we are planning to reach. We also plan to use the outreach to reach the communities also that don't have school and other communities around the school for the out of school girls. Not all our girl child are in school, some are not there. So we are using also the community approach, using outreaches to get to those girls that are out of school at the market squares, other social gathering environment, using the opportunity of yellow fever, main A, COVID-19, campaigns to all reach out to these girls using religious houses. The religious houses have been mapped out by the states and the local government so that teams will be assigned to, to also reach there. And then the private sector, signing parts will also be provided to some of these girls as incentives during the exercise to encourage them. So that is for the outreach component of it. Now, during that five days, there will also be health facility-based vaccination, which will be the fixed sessions. After that first five days of giving opportunity, using the outreaches and the fix, we will continue with the vaccination for this age group nine to 14. In all those fixed facility where this activity took place to ensure that none of them is missed. That will now be automatically rolled into the routine immunization of the country and it becomes one of our EPI scheduled vaccine in Nigeria. We will continue like that for the girl child 9 to 14 until December 2024. From January 2025, where we will have covered all the age group 9 to 14, we will now transit into 
our girl child, the target will now be all those girls that come into nine years will be rich and vaccinated, while the plan is also on to get additional vaccine for the girl child. So those are the approaches we are using to make sure that these vaccines are available and reach those girls that we are targeting to reach using the outreaches and the fixed facility to get them vaccinated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Basi. Um, it's very interesting because I know that you will have a lot of flack from the fact that it's not going to every child across the country, or at least we don't all have the opportunity. Um, but I, I've heard what you said. You said by the November, you will be getting ready for the next batch and it will be rolled out in, in February. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Vasi, I will come back to you in that February time to come and tell us that you are ready for us too, because it's very important so that we make sure nobody feels left out and nobody feels that they cannot get this vaccine because that you don't want people crossing state lines. Then you will now not know how to monitor your numbers because a lot of people will want it and a lot of people can't access it. However, one last thing I want to ask you, how do you intend to engage NGOs? There are other small organizations that are going to be willing to support your project in moving this faster because it's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a federal Ministry of Health project. And I'm, I'm a bit surprised that the Ministry of Education are not in this thing, considering you're going to schools. Schools are key. I'm a teacher. That's what we do. So I'm, I'm a bit surprised. We need teachers. We need the education department in this campaign because they have access and they are most probably going to be able to access those children a lot easier in a safer space. But let me go to my last question, which is NGOs. I okay. want to find out how you're going to get them because you need them in this. If not, you're not going to be able to. At least they help to get those. Okay. You know, let me start from this angle, from your last comments. We are having collaboration with the Federal Minister of Health the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs, the Federal Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. and other relevant MDAs like the NAVDAC, the NCDC, all our partners and donors. We have weekly technical working group meeting for the past three months, and this will be sustained till the introduction. Now, we are very conscious of the fact that this will not succeed without involving the Ministry of Education. And that is why even from the application stage, we had representative from the Federal Ministry of Education as part of the proposal development team. We have also communicated again to them the dates and what we require from them. And there have been communications to the state ministries of health. Now, from the state ministries of health, they are going to engage the principals of the schools that are within their domain officially ahead of the introduction so that they are fully aware the days that the team will be going there for the vaccination, then they must have been aware and the girls will be fully ready. So there is strong collaboration with all the relevant ministries and NDAs under the leadership of our chief executive who has always provided that guardian and supervisory group so that everybody that is supposed to do it are part of it. And then we are also engaging, having several installation meetings with our religious and traditional leaders. For the traditional leaders, it's a quarterly engagement. Just yesterday, we had- so this is Our time is up now, so can you just help me quickly round up with okay. my one, one liner now? I need just the one liner on the NGOs, please. A one liner okay. on the NGOs, please. And the NGOs. We have engaged the religious traditional leaders. We are engaging. We have engaged the NGOs and CSOs. We have engaged the academia and professional associations, and then we have also engaged the leadership of the states and LGS, not just in sensitization, but also training and sharing IEC materials with basic information with them to share with the people within their states and LGS. Thank you very much, Dr. Basi, for a fantastic conversation with you. I most probably will come back to you on this matter as we go along, because as you understand, um, stakeholders, we're all stakeholders on driving um, change and making sure that this initiative, you know, once you are in this cancer journey, your, your brain 
clicks when there's opportunities for us to make a difference. So thank you for engaging with us. Thank you to the federal government for making this happen. We really appreciate. We really need to see this roll out and we would like to continue to discuss with you as you go on and let the let the population of Nigeria know what is going on in making sure that this rollout is a success. So to all our viewers out there, please, all of you that are, have children that are eligible for this vaccine, reach out and get it once it is out. Please, it saves lives. This vaccine saves lives and it's important that we understand. Even I am not going to lie, my children have had it. So please, I am saying it so that you know that I am not advertising for the federal government. I believe in it and I have children that have had it and children that have had children after that. So there's this notion that some people won't have children because they've had it. I have grandchild. So please, let us please, please support the federal government and reach out to these children and let's make a difference for Nigeria. Together we fight, together we win. Thank you for joining us on Combo Cancer Foundation. Um, AIT, thank you for making this possible. We really appreciate you. And Doc? Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I have to round up now. Thank you viewers for watching us and we'll see you again in a two weeks time where we'll be talking about childhood cancers. Children are still at the, at the forefront of our conversation. Thank you all and we'll see you soon. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Dennis Edge, your founder, Commod Cancer Foundation, and her guest on that Enlightenment Awareness Campaign talking about human papillomavirus vaccine.